been a lot of talk about it this week, St. Helena. Um, let's get your take on it first of all. Obviously, you know, when you look at the 48 hour decks, Tom Cannon was up to ride, then it was Reese Finn who has not ridden since March. AP gets the ride. Your view on the. Was it a coup? Um, yeah, it was obviously a coup because they've. The market suggested that it was back from six to one into eleven to ten. You know, they they obviously knew what they were doing. Um, and saying that have any rules been broken? No. Have rules been bent? Yes. Um, but you know, no rules have been broken. I'm just kind of, you know, I think it was the jockey change from, that I didn't like, and then also you know punters who have had early bets in that race. You know, if you if you back the horse that's finished second to to him or third, you know, you, you probably well, feel hopefully a we bit can get the, we, we can get the graphic up. Which indicates um, not just uh, St. Helena, but a couple of the other um, horses that have run over the last couple of years. Adam, Gary? The way I see it is the only thing about it is the jockey change. If you take St. Helena's form, they'd had to have seven runs till it got a mark. Okay? The horse came straight from running on the flat for Harry Dunlop ran during the winter on heavy ground, it's all of its flat winds were on good to firm ground, so it kept being on the go, running over hurdles. All of a sudden it has a little bit of a break, gets run on a proper distance on ground that it likes, handicap debut, and it pops up and wins. It didn't win doing handstands, you know, it was all out to win. It made a mistake at the last as well, didn't it? Yeah, but, you know, it, it was entitled off that mark on better ground. Off that mark? Well, we'll talk about marks. We have got on the screen um, details about the scene. pulled up three starts, beaten 82 lengths Plumpton, beaten 74 lengths Wincanton, beaten 70 lengths Toaster, given a mark of 82, <coughs> late jockey he booking, heavy. one, two, five day break, AP McCoy takes the ride. But the, those runs were straight off a, flat, a full flat campaign in the summer on heavy ground. The horses, look, I've got the horses form in front of me. Five of its wins were all on good to firm ground. If you run a horse that it plumped and over two miles over hurdles on heavy ground and it's pulled up and beaten nowhere, it's not a, it's not a big surprise. But the fact is, all of a sudden, it's handicap debut on decent ground and it runs a decent race. In a, okay. Let's be honest, it's oh, a weak oh, race. Gary, quickly, because we've got Jeff Banks on the line, so what do you view? Well, I'm similar to Adam on the sense that, um, you know, she's been running on ground that's not going to suit her, and toaster and plumbing. The question is why? Well, because the owner's entitled to have a runner, isn't they? You know, if the owner pays the bills, which is, this is my main issue with it, the owner pays the bills. We as punters do not pay the bills for the horse. So the owner is entitled to run it where they want to run it. If the prize money in this country was better, look, the horse has won, what, just under two grand? For a 400 and something six mile round trip, you barely got any diesel money left out of that. So if the owners and whoever have had a little gamble on it, Good luck to them. Our system allows for that to happen. No rules have been broken. Okay, good luck so. to a gamble. Good, ev uh, good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Um, I, you probably listened to that intently. Um, your, your view on the whole episode? Well, for, for the sake, Peter, I thoroughly disagree with the last remark made by Gary there, where he talks about funding ownership by gambles. This may well be uh, going on, but it doesn't make it right. Ownership is about prize money. It isn't about running horses down the park and getting them ready for gambles and, and, and in that way funding funding the, the, whole, the whole exercise. So I, I would disagree with that. In terms of, obviously it's been on Twitter and, and, and you know, people are making a big case with the fact that the jockey change. What do you object to? Do you object to the gamble or the jockey change or, or do you believe that that was preempted and 48 hours before the trainer knew exactly what was going to happen? say that there are, it's not been established if any of the rules of racing have been broken. Um, this is not the first incident whereby, you know, horses with exactly the same profile, with the same jockey change scenarios have taken place. And every single time, it's not the bookmakers that are doing the whining here. We haven't heard any bookmakers apart from, you know, you could say, you know, some people, you know, the trolls announce that if I complain about it, it's got something to do with my personal fortune which is total nonsense. We suspended betting on this event at 8.30 in the morning. We didn't take a shilling on this race. We didn't get ourselves involved in the slightest. I just feel that this kind of thing leaves a bad taste you know, on the flavour of racing, on the good name of racing. It brings racing into disrepute, this kind of behaviour. Um, it's been uh, well established now, for example, Planetoid, which was a similar profile, a similar case, the BHF now dropped the case into Planetoid. So it's clear that their view is, um, or they are unable to find any breaches of the rules of racing. And yet it's the punters 
who seem to be doing the most complaining about this these particular cases it's the punters not the bookmakers because the bookmakers were alive to this gamble the bha were alive to this gamble everybody knew what was likely to happen and so therefore it wasn't the bookmakers we were ready and waiting for you know you know we, we'd seen this horse 80 to 1 100 to 1 33 to 1 66 to 1 and nobody has a penny but, on but, it but could it could not be the case that the trainer was just very good at getting them back after a long break i mean there's a number of horses that we highlight in the moment that go on the screen they all came back after long breaks well, I, mean, I don't want to go into the business of form. I mean, I think it's rather evident that these, these horses are entirely better than is being, than is, than is, uh, than their, you know, their form, their apparent form is showing. But he's not the only one, though, I mean, Jeff. Let's, let's Jeff, Jeff, on Jeff, 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 Jeff. He's not the only one, though, is he? No, it, no. it happens all the time. No, no, you, no, let's answer the, let's, let's answer people like Billy Blakeman who turn around and say, who treat trainers like this as if they're some kind of hero, as if it's, a, as if it's an outstanding performance to, to leave a horse, you know, you can leave a horse sitting in the field, fat as, fat as Larry sent out on a race course, and of course it won't run well. It doesn't, it isn't a remarkable training performance, this kind of thing. But the point, the point of the matter is that it leaves a bad taste with the punters, with the customers of racing, and for that reason, and for that reason only, um, I disapprove of it. And I, what I would say should happen, given that there are so many of these cases, including the Barney Curley stuff that goes on quite routinely and all this sort of, sort of material, which do not apparently break the rules of racing. It is perhaps time now that we revisit the rules of racing to make sure that such instances... Um, as we've had so many of in the last couple of years, are dealt with, covered with, under our rules. What do you want the BHA to do? Change the rules. And, and do what? Uh, uh, ch change the rules such that, so it, it, well, it, it, it would need, obviously, you'd have to sit down and look at, look at the format of the rules as they stand right now, but it is quite clear that so if the customers of racing don't have no confidence in the product, have no confidence in low-level racing for these, this kind of reason. And the British Horse Racing Authority are unable to find anything wrong in these cases that we, need, that, we have a, that we have a problem, that we have a conflict of interest here. Racing isn't about gambles of this nature. It isn't, and it shouldn't be seen that way. It's supposed to be a fair and clean sport. It's supposed to be perceived to be that way. And if we, if we have situations like this ongoing happening routinely and they are not against the rules of racing and it's upsetting the customers of the sport then it is time for us to change the rules but it's upsetting but if you're a punter in the betting shop and you see that jockey change at midday and you notice it and you back it you're not going to be unhappy are you it's not about it's not about money you're thinking you're you're discussing those that are those that are informed enough to jump on the gamble and be able to get on the gamble as well it isn't about money it's about it's about the public's perceptions about the public's confidence in the sport so let's not talk about money that's what billy Bellick, blakeman's interested in i'm not interested in money i'm interested in the public perception the clean nature the good name of horse racing okay well thanks very much indeed for your time jeff well we'll debate that here um uh, have a good day today wherever you are you ask it today i'm gonna to ask it today peter and hope to see a lot, lot of punters there today enjoy yourself lad. okay thanks a lot thank you bye-bye right Strong views there. Gary, you, you sort of looked at that and thought, I, d I disagree with that. What points do you disagree with? I'm not disagreeing with. I don't think he um, kind of understood what I meant. I never meant that gambling, those gambles fund the sport. I just meant if the money isn't there and the prize money, if the owners had a bet on the horse and it's, you know, the owner's entitled to have a bet on their own horse and they're told that the horse is ready to run a good race then fair play if they've won a bit of money off of it. I don't see what's wrong with that. I think the main issue... But the point is, he says it's bad for racing, which I can, I can understand to a degree, but I don't think the average Joe on the street will be affected by that in any way. I'll be and, totally and, and like with the Barney Curley incident, I think, it, you know, if people think it's dodgy racing, they're, 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 it's not going to, you know yeah. what I mean, they're not going to be swayed one way or another. It's still going to bet tomorrow. No, I'll be totally honest, it passed me by on Monday. I only noticed it because mm. it was on Twitter in the evening. Yeah, which, most, is, most, which is great entertainment in yeah, itself. Yeah, most people that I know didn't really give two hoots about it. I don't think yeah. they think racing's dodgy or anything in that from just that incident. I think if racing is perceived to be dodgy, it's because of how racing has been over the last 100 years. But I think more to the point, we have trainers, uh, the handicap system in this country cannot be right if horses run over those kind of marks, there's a long gap, or suddenly they get a lean at handicap mark. Well, They're look, trying to play the handicap, this, aren't they? But basically what's happened here is this, this is a good ground horse and they've been running it on soft ground. So that's obviously going to hide its true ability. So they've got mm. a mark 
down. What about the now, jockey change? What about, what about the jockey change? What about the jockey change? That. We've run out of time, but what about the, the jockey change? The jockey change, jockey change is poor. To change it. That jockey change is poor. Um, because people look at it because they look at the fact that Reese Flint had not ridden well, a Reece horse Flint since March. Well, Reese Flint missed out on a riding fee and he's missed yeah, out. He hadn't ridden since March. But that doesn't matter, Pete. What's that guy? He was because, working his yeah, way back to fitness. He was booked. Look, I think the point is perceived that he was never going to ride that horse anyway. Oh, oh yeah. He, well, well, he's come out and said he was, though. But he's, he's, come come out, he was. he's come out and said that mm. he was able to do the weight, he was able to do it. Now, yeah. he's lost out on a riding fee and he's lost out on uh, winning, winning prize money. That's hardly hardly fair, mm. you know. At, at, at the end of the day, it's if everyone's gone on about Saint Helena, how did it get a mark in the first place? So, in, technically, it goes back to the BHA. Whoever looks after that division, yeah. what made you give that horse a mark of eighty-two? They, they, the stewards at Savile they interviewed um, what turned out to be the second horse. Jamie Snowden was interviewed. Brendan Powell before the race on the running of the, what they anticipated in the race. Yeah. Well, it's, because so they they knew. Made, it's because they were making such a thing about it because the other gym best horse that McCoy was on had been pulled out. So. It, you know, they're entitled to pull McCoy onto the other horse, because in our rules, you're allowed to. Okay. It's, it happens like that. On no no some, rules some, have been broken. Sure, but some would question whether... Some would question, week, but surely that rule, McCoy was going to ride that But surely that rule needs to be changed.